Hello, Sim Gamers, and welcome to episode one of Let's Play Kerbal Space Program for Science, the uh, exploration mode. And uh, if you haven't tuned in to episode zero, please be sure to do so. Do so. I'll put a card up here to, to, to point to that video. Basically, we just kicked off our science career, did our very first mission, and got that out of the way. And with that in mind, we're going to take a look at mission control to find out what's coming up. The next one is out of the atmosphere. Someone left an anonymous note that our launch wasn't a success. Let's make it undeniable. You're just in time. We're in the middle of a crisis. Someone left a rude sticky note on the staff fridge beside the pole for best vending machine on campus. It began, was the first launch really a success? The sentiment was mostly positive, but the writer, whose identity I will track down, ended on a harsh note. Russell didn't punch past the atmosphere, wasn't badical enough. Badical? Now, why is that tone so irritatingly familiar? Good thing I always carry an ultraviolet flashlight because the writer somehow fit a second message in invisible ink. It said, if mission control punches through the atmosphere and into space, I'll buy them three coffee makers. Well, we accept their challenge. The perfect mission objective. Your objective is to launch a rocket from Kerbin and fly higher than 70,000 meters. As tempting as it would be to go through the atmosphere, we must make sure we're not planning an escape for Mr. or Mrs. Notewriter. Get out there and get those coffee makers. I'm going to get an intern to track down the sticky note culprit. Good luck and return when your report is ready to be submitted. All right, so we have our mission parameters. Uh, let's go ahead and get into the vehicle assembly building. I'm gonna go ahead and track this mission. Uh, I'm sorry, the R&D center to research some new parts to potentially help us along the way. Now, taking a look at what we have available here, Obviously, we're picking up light launchers. That's the only node that's available to us. But if we actually take a look at nodes down the tree, we can... We can... push ourselves further than we otherwise would be able to do if we do something like this. I'm going to grab aerodynamics and stability. And then... With the remaining science I have available, I'll grab survivability. And what this gets me is a heat shield. Now I can confidently build a rocket with the parts that I have. And I'll show you how it's pretty easy to not only get into to, to break through the atmosphere, but also establish a stable orbit, which will allow us to complete a couple of missions in this same flight. So with that, we're going to go to the vehicle assembly building. Uh, that one. Here we are in the vehicle assembly building, and it's time to build a rocket that is not only capable of... Where is it? We don't have a handy mission tracker here? Doesn't seem like it. That's okay. Well, we know our, oh, what our mission is, and we want to get more science. I want to break through the atmosphere, but we can do more than break through the atmosphere in this first full episode. And here's how we do it. We now have thermal couple, a thermal available, and the only reason this was available is because I managed to pay attention to what science was available to capture along my very first flight. And we got 12 science out of the deal, giving us just enough to get these parts. So, fuel tanks. Oops. <clears throat> um, decouplers. Put on a de decoupler here, and what we're actually building is a rocket that has two of the FLT-400s, the uh, swivel sustainer engine. The reason for that is because sustainer engines are best in the upper atmosphere and in space. But we want some more oomph when we're down low. So we're gonna stack up a decoupler here, throw down four fuel tanks like so and then toss on a reliant engine on the bottom for stability purposes we'll add some fins 
those look good. We've got our thermal covered already. Uh, we don't have a parachute for recovery. We're going to take care of that now. Just the uh, same parachute we we're using before. And this rocket is able to, should be able to reach orbit. And we can verify that by checking our stages here. I'm going to combine some stages. So in this little um, settings menu, we can double check whether or not this uh, this is uh, going to be using this in the vacuum or atmosphere. So we're saying this is an atmospheric engine. Let's get correct information about it. Uh, this one is a vacuum engine. So between these two, we have almost, not quite, 4,000 delta V. And we can verify that that's enough to get into orbit by planning a quick trip to someplace close like Mun. Now, we don't have enough delta V to actually get there and do anything meaningful, but if we look at this information here, it's telling us Kerbin Low Orbit only takes 3,400 delta V. And if you're new to Kerbal Space Program, delta V is shorthand for change in velocity. Literally, we're stepping on the gas and changing our velocity from whatever we're, however fast we're going right now, to changing it by 3,400 meters per second. In this case, this launch vessel has 4,283 delta V, which is plenty to get into orbit and do some orbital stuff. The last thing we do want to take a look at is the engineer's report to make sure that our thrust to weight ratio is at least 1.0. If it's not, our rocket's never getting off the ground. In this case, it's 1.2. That's a little low. There are some strategies we could use to raise that, but actually, um, I'm not concerned. So we're going to launch this vessel and we're going to actually going to do multiple missions and get multiple bits of science along the way. In episode zero of the last rocket was named Fly Safe. Uh, but these are the Kerbury rockets. So I'm calling this Kerbury 1. There we go. Kerbury 1. I like it. Kerbury workspace, sure. Let's go ahead and launch this vessel. Uh, before I go, though, a last check on staging. Bottom stage, decoupler. Booster stage and recovery stage. All set. All right. We're in countdown, launching this rocket here in a little bit. Just remember this sequence when you put your rocket together to be able to establish orbit. Two FLT 400s on top. A swivel engine, four FLT 400s on the bottom, and a Reliant. Some fins for stability, stack decoupler, and parachute for your standard recovery procedures, and you're on your way. Now at the beginning part of this flight, I'm just flying vertically up until I reach 100 meters per second or so. Actually, yeah, 100 meters per second or so on my surface speed, and then I'm going to begin pitching right. So I'm pitching right, I don't have any control surface, and th this doesn't swivel or anything, so it's whatever force is being applied from the stability control system of the command pod that's allowing me to pitch over. But I'm going to keep doing this until I reach up at, at least 10 degrees off of vertical. Just holding down the, uh, the D key until I've pitched over to 10 degrees off of vertical. That's good. And I'm activating SAS to prograde mode, which means Bob Kerman will take over and make sure the rocket is basically pointed in the direction we're headed. What's going to happen now is that aerodynamics and gravity will naturally slowly turn our rocket over. And we want to do that because not only do we need altitude and vertical speed to get up high enough, but we need a lot of horizontal speed if you remember the lessons. We need plenty of horizontal speed to uh, actually establish orbit. Our engine's out of fuel. We'll go ahead and ditch the um, the lifting stage. We're now in our booster here. And at this point, we're just coasting. We're going to go ahead and wait, gather any science we have. I'm going to go ahead and wait until I'm 30 seconds away from my apoapsis. The apoapsis is the highest point in my orbit. 
the altitude indicator right here. We're losing a little bit over time due to atmospheric friction, but not much. And here's our time. This tells us how far away from the apoapsis we are. A quick, oops, that's paused. Well, sure, while we're paused, a quick look at the map can show the shape of our current orbital, tra orbital trajectory. This is our current setup right now. We'll reach this point in a little bit. Go ahead and re-engage uh, re here. Bob Kerbin is keeping our spacecraft pointed prograde. Prograde is a shorthand for in the direction of travel, basically, along your orbital plane. As soon as I hit 30 seconds on in T-minus, I'm going to reignite this engine. So what this allows me to do is now I'm applying a little bit of vertical thrust, but mostly horizontal thrust. Our apoapsis is naturally going to climb, so we're continuing to apply thrust, thrust forward. Apoapsis rises up. We're basically continually pushing out the highest point in space that we're going to reach. And I'm going to wait until that reaches at least 80 kilometers and then shut down the engine. And we're going to coast the rest of the way shortly before reaching the apoapsis. So here's the shape of our orbit now. Shortly before reaching this, we're going to fire up the engines once again. And we see that our mission was complete along the way. So shortly before this, we're firing up the engine once again. And we're going to do that to just change the shape of this orbit to really, really push out the spot where we would be crashing on the ground until we're essentially falling around the planet. So maybe at uh, T minus 10 is when I'll fire up the engines. Twenty, nineteen, eighteen, seventeen, sixteen, fifteen, fourteen, thirteen, twelve, eleven, ten. So we are firing up the engines once again, and this is doing a great job of pushing out our apoapsis without uh, actually changing uh, much. Since we're pretty close to normal here on this, I'm gonna switch SES control to stability, just to, to stability. Oh yeah, now we can go full prograde. And what we're doing now is we're raising the periapsis, which is the lowest point in our orbit, to at least basically where we are. Over here, we have plenty of fuel left. We have 493 Delta V. And we have established a stable orbit. Our periapsis is here at 79,000 uh, meters. Apoapsis here is at 95,000 meters. And with that, let's go over the um, information that we pulled up. Research inventory. Okay. We got a, uh, a cruise assessment of the situation from Kerbin Low Orbit. Very, very good. Now here's the kicker. Quick save, just in case this is still an early, early access game after all. We're gonna go to Mission Control. Because we've made it out of the atmosphere, we've, we've accomplished this task. Let's go ahead and submit our report. Oh hi, you're already back. Not only did you achieve the objective, but you did so with minimal explosions. Take that, Jeb. That's right. Turns out our new intern snuck the mean sticky note into our break room on his behalf. Jeb's been wanting to press our big shiny thanks science button ever since he heard it would be uh, dangerous for someone with no button training. Legals told him he can't touch the button until he's gone through the advanced button pressing at the training center. Apparently, he's channeling his frustration into tiny, sticky screeds. Thanks to your efforts, we now have three new coffee makers from Jeb's company. Well, maybe not entirely new. There is a bit of a junkyard taste. I have a bet with a few other department heads to see who can brew the, strong, brew the strongest coffee. The winner gets a new coffee appliance. If I win... I'm getting a fourth copy maker with all the works. Exciting times, Director. When you're ready, come by for your next mission. I know I'll see you lunar or later. <laughs> wow. So.
so satisfying. Mission completed. So now we have two missions that we can accept. Establish an orbit around Kermit with apoapsis less than 300 kilometers and a periapsis greater than 70 kilometers. Mission brief. Greetings, Director. The day has finally arrived. All our research has culminated in a single shining moment. I have finally perfected the strongest cup of coffee. Well, I did do it with a bit of help from Newton, our intern. You've got to try the Macchiato Mark I. Three shots of espresso, ten sugars, and a teeny tiny splash of foam. I've had two in the last hour. It's miraculous. I no longer require sleep. From here, the snack department will be taking over development. Now, onto our agenda. It's time to finally orbit Kerman. All our attempts to orbit our beloved blue marble have resulted in what the tarmac calls Go Boom. But how hard can it be to turn sideways? Maybe we just need more coffee. Your objective is to establish an orbit around Kerbin with an AP less than three, 300 kilometers and a PE greater than 70 kilometers. The sweet spot is where your orbit doesn't leave Kerbin, but also doesn't dip into Kerbin's atmosphere. While we at Mission Control are big fans of learning by doing, we are also aware that uh, new craters could harm our chances of making the cover of Giant Lawns Weekly. If you want to brush up on your space flight basics, you can always hop over to the training center and take the Orbits Are Weird refresher course. Orbits are weird. Going up, then sideways, then falling forever. Too many directions. Make sure you have the latest parts from the R&D center and look both ways before crossing. See you soon, Director. Over and out. So I'll go ahead and track that mission, and then the buoyancy test we're going to track as well. Now back to the tracking station to track any missions that we have currently in progress. We're around Kerbin, and we can grab control of the spacecraft. And immediately, <laughs> we have the science reward from the mission that we're already completing ahead of time. So I think that's a really clever way that the devs have done this in Kerbal Space Program. Um, you can accept a mission when you're already in the situation and sort of complete that task and, and stack up and get ahead of the game if you want to. Now all we need to do is land our ship somewhat safely, maybe approaching a little bit responsibly. So we are going to orbit to around here. There's no new science to be gained right now. But we're just coming around to a point where we're actually going to burn our engines to give us a nice safe landing. Maybe a little further. Here we go. So here's the routine to come back home. Face our ship retrograde. We're going to burn the rest of this fuel, changing our orbit. I am going to do this from the map view because I want to make sure we splash down in water. And the reason I want to make sure we splash down in water is because of this mission right here. Land a pod in a body of water. So... Let's go ahead and fire up our rocket engines and we can quickly see that our orbit is changing. And right about there should be good. We have now established a trajectory that will bring us into re-entry. Oh, I'm sensing one problem. I went through all the effort of buying a heat shield and I didn't mount it on my craft. Well, let's find out how it goes. Oh no, I did! Okay, <laughs> The whole point of going through that part of this tech tree was to actually mount a heat shield so that we could safely land at orbital velocities. I wonder if this trajectory takes into account the um, the braking maneuver we're going to hit when we hit atmosphere here. Because we're coming up on our primary reentry interface right about now. There it is. So this reentry and heating is really 
really quite well done. I'm just hoping we still land on water. The drogue shoot is out, continuing to further decelerate us. And I think that drogue shoot jumping around and stars jumping in the background is actually um, due to... Oh, this is going to be close. Is due to uh, the simulation sort of re... Recentering. So they want us in a body of water, right? <laughs> It'd be funny as heck if we hit one of those bullseyes. We are coming up on ground. So we missed the objective to land on a body of water. Uh, instead, it looks like we pretty much are going to smash right into Kerbal Space Center. Or at the very least, the mountains nearby. Right over there is the water. Well, this provides us a different interesting opportunity. The vessel is recoverable. Yes, it is. However, there's more science to grab. And, hang on. It's telling us there's more science to grab if we do an EVA. So let's go ahead and just do that. Hey, we're here. We're here. Uh, our very first extra vehicular activity. Oh, yes. Grab a sample of the mountainscape. Basically, don't take... Uh, and so we have surface sample data and actual surface samples. Giving us a total of... What is that? 52 science? Not counting the mission? Let's go ahead and... Uh, board this craft again and get ourselves recovered. Boarding a vessel has added new science reports. Recover our vessel. You made that look easy. Thank you very much. So, to mission control to claim our rewards. Orbit Kerbin. There you are, you magnif magnificent magnet of scientific study. You, you did amazing. We had to watch. Uh, we had a watch party to celebrate. There was an exact replica of your vessel made out of cake. It was surprisingly flammable. You might have noticed a new set of missions are now available. You see, if the main missions are canon, these contractors are the adventurous spin-offs. Some of these challenges bring in more science. Others exist to keep our part manufacturers happy. We can't afford to turn anyone away. You know this is the first space program on Kerbin, right? Now that you've conquered orbit, it's time to visit our nearest neighbor, the Mun. Come back here when you're ready to go. Mission completed. Establish an orbit. I think the two animations were probably reversed because this one looks like a break atmosphere one and the other one looks like an orbit one. We have lots of new missions available. Moon or bust, going green, and spacewalking. But we will take a look at those in the next episode of Let's Play Kerbal Space Program 2, Early Access for Science. Until then, I'm Sim Gamer. <laughs>